from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for the podcaster who is wearing a watch. Uh, but I don't need, you know what time it is. It's time for me to go off topic, get mixed up. It's time for me to keep you company. Uh, cause you, cause, uh, that's kind of what I do. That's, uh, also I said, I was trying to think of more witty things to say about not having a watch. Uh, you're here just in time for me to go off topic and get mixed up. And if you say, I don't know what you're talking about. I thought this was a sleep podcast meant to keep you company. So you're not alone in the deep, dark night to take your mind off stuff so you could fall asleep. You're the most important part of the show. But this podcast is very different. Uh, not, not for everybody. Give it a few tries. See how it goes. Well, the structure show is a, I'm going to do uh, some support for the podcast. Then it'll be an intro to help you ease you into bedtime. And there'll be an episodically modular bedtime story you could listen to in any order. And it's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. And these sponsors are what enable us to be here for you free twice a week. Hey, everybody, it's Scoots here, and I'm uh, here uh, with a little bit of a pitch for you. You know, my purpose in making this show is to be here twice a week for free to keep you company in the deep, dark night. But really, the podcast is about feeling lost alone in the deep, dark night. And I can definitely relate to that right now, because every time I ask for help, it, it does feel a little bit scary and lonely for me. But I'm doing this one as a call to adventure. I'm asking you right now to take some heroic action. Join a rebellion uh, in the Deep Dark Night, the Deep Dark Night United, and pay for a free podcast. And the reason to pay for it uh, beyond the bonus content, beyond paying for something you get something out of, is paying for a show that makes you feel less alone and makes other people feel less alone. That's what the whole podcast existence, that's the foundation of it. Be a supporter of the Deep Dark Night United. Pay for a free podcast. Be a rebel. Become a patron. I need your help. I need your help right now. Being a rebel, a DDNU rebel, paying for a free podcast that makes you feel less alone. So if the show makes you feel less alone and you can afford to pay for the podcast, can you do it right now? Uh, you can support the show uh, at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. You save money becoming an annual patron. But if you can afford to do so, the biggest obstacle to getting support for the show a lot of times is people are falling asleep. So I got to ask to interrupt your sleep for a minute. You're part of the Deep Dark Night United. You're taking heroic, rebellious action and you're making me feel less alone. You'll feel less alone and a whole lot of other people feel less alone because that's really what it's about. We're doing this together in the deep, dark night, but I really am in a position where I need your help right now. If you can afford to, to pay for a free podcast, uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron, type it in your phone, sign up, and then tomorrow you can figure out the bonus content and all that stuff. Thank you so much, my rebels in the deep, dark night. All right, everybody. And now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. You know, I can be one of those people that ends up focusing on problems instead of solutions. You know, like when I forget to charge the batteries of the recorder and the backup batteries aren't charged and the recorder stops in the middle of the recording and then it it, it, it just spirals down there and it's like problem after problem after problem. And then I start thinking, what's going to go wrong next? Instead of thinking about solutions and maybe having a different mind Mindsets. It can be tough to train your brain when you're stuck in that problem solving mode, when you're faced with a challenge in life. But when you learn how to find your own solutions, there's no better feeling. And working with a therapist uh, can help you become a better problem solver, making it easier to accomplish your goals, no matter how big or small. And I'm talking from experience. I go to talk therapy every single week. I recommend it to everyone in my personal life because it works. I have someone to talk about with my problems and my mindset to say, hey, Hey, what about this? Maybe you could look at it in a different way. And talk therapy, working with a licensed therapist has helped me get out of that place of just looking at everything like a problem and be like, oh, what about being excited about something? Be excited about a challenge. Therapy has given me so much more than I expected when I started it. It's helped me with my stress. It's helped me with my emotional healing. It's helped me deal with anxiety and depression and give me concrete skills to live my life and to live my life more 
more fully. So if you're thinking about giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, it's accessible, affordable, and entirely online. Get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey, and you can switch therapists anytime. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash sleep with me today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash sleep with me. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. It is time to talk about our sponsor, Helix Sleep. Have you taken the quiz at helixsleep.com slash sleep? You know, there's a chill in the air now. Fall is coming and there's nothing better than getting that pumpkin spice tea and getting in bed, getting cozy with my Helix Dusk Lux. Oh boy, I'm going to be piling those blankets on, getting my tea, getting a nice little book and making my, you know, nesting in in my Helix Dusk Lux. I love it so much. So comfortable, great for sleeping, great for chilling. You know, Helix Sleep is a premium mattress brand. It has tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. The Helix lineup has 14 unique mattresses. They've got luxury models, mattresses for big and tall sleepers, even a mattress for kids. But you might be like, how do I know which Helix mattress is best for me? You just take that Helix Sleep quiz, helixsleep.com slash sleep. You find your perfect mattress under two minutes and your personalized mattress is shipped right to your door, free of charge. And Helix knows there's no better way to test out a mattress than by sleeping on it in your own home. That's why they offer a 100-night risk-free trial. You get to try out your new Helix mattress, see how your body adjusts, and if you decide it's not the best fit, you're welcome to return for a full refund. And everybody's unique. Everyone sleeps differently. That's why they have several different mattress models to choose from each design for specific sleep positions and feel preferences. And I speak from experience. I sleep on my stomach. I sleep on my side. I sleep hot. And when I took the quiz, it matched me with the Helix Dusk. I picked the Dusk Lux and it's perfect for all that. I don't get hot when I'm sleeping at night. I get my comfortable when I'm on my side. I'm comfortable when I'm on my stomach. I love my Dusk Lux. Not only is it the best mattress I've slept on, but the setup was fast and easy. Helix mattresses are delivered in a box, shipped right to your door, free of charge. Plus Helix mattress mattresses are American made. They come with a 10 or 15 year warranty, depending on the model. And don't forget, you get to try it out for hundred nights risk-free. If you don't love it, I mean, I know you will, but if you don't, they'll pick it up for you and give you a full refund. And Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for Sleep With Me listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash sleep. That's helixsleep.com slash sleep. With Helix, better sleep starts now. All right, everybody, it's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The one part of the podcast in each year is where I pop my peas. If you please, I thank the listeners who supported the sponsors. That's how we're able to be here for you free twice a week. And you know, I love making this show. Not only is it supposed to take your mind off stuff and put you to sleep, it's here. So I, hopefully right now, listen to me, you feel less alone in the deep, dark night. You know, other people are listening too. And you may have heard me asking you, hey, if you support a sponsor, please let me know about it. I, I'm going to make some some changes behind the scenes with the sponsors because the goal is for the show to come out free twice a week. So don't worry, I'm on that. Uh, but if I could use your help, uh, if you're in a position to do so to support the show directly uh, or support a sponsor, let me know about it. Let the sponsor know about it or just spread the word about the podcast. Let people know about it for free. It could really use your help. And then let me know so I can say thank you because I appreciate it. I want to be here keeping you company in the deep, dark night. That's my job. And I work really hard at it. So thank you so much. The next part of the Sleepy Support Zone is you getting the support you need right now. If you're if you're having a tough time, there's links to resources in the show notes that you could connect with right now. It's also about being a part of positive change, not just saying Black Lives Matter, not just saying stop AAPI, not just saying support Ukraine, but learning more and taking action. There's links to resources where you could do that in our show notes. And we're part of a lot of different communities, but one of the communities projects we're participating in as a group is uh, building hygiene kits for people experiencing homelessness. You could join us. You could take part. Uh, we're, I'm driving hygiene kits down to the Midnight Mission. We've got another partner coming up here. Uh, help out. Uh, have fun. Come to free live streams. What more could you ask for? Positive change and being a part of uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash Midnight Mission. All the instructions come through that uh, uh, email. And uh, that's it. What do you say we slow 
slow it down and get on with the show. Mystery Bard, a lot, uh, first Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on the show. Who are they? This posty poster song sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes too. Ashley, Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team let us down. They're on the website. I am the Mystery Bard. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. All right. See the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators you Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud that we could dance Rusty Biscuit, Lois, and a like banana. Leah does the transcript. Thanks, Mystery Bard. I'm at Dear Scooter on Twitter and Instagram. That's where you can find me. What do you say? We slow it down and get on with the show. Uh, hey, you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep. Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you can set aside whatever is keeping you awake, whether it's thoughts, you know, things on your mind, like things you're thinking about, about the past, present, and future. That comes up for me. Thoughts. They come up. They're thoughts. Uh, always. Uh, yeah. You've heard me say it. If you heard me say it once, you heard me say it a thousand times. Yeah, I'll be thinking about what I just said uh, for a thousand more. It doesn't even make it as thought. So thoughts, uh, feelings, anything coming up for you emotionally related to the thoughts or that are just there. Whatever it is, uh, like uh, thought, you know, feelings about thoughts or feelings about feelings. It could be physical sensations, it could be changes in time, temperature, routine, uh, whatever's keeping awake. It could be a lot of different stuff. And and by the way, I'm I'm so glad you're here. I wish you weren't going through whatever you were going through that is keeping you up, but I'm glad you're here. And there's a lot of other listeners that are glad you're here or glad you found the show. And hopefully it'll work for you and help you out because you deserve a good night's sleep. That's why I make the show. And while whatever is keeping you up or whatever you're, you're going through or, or whether it's just temporary or situational or it's something that's been kind of ongoing for a while, I might not have experienced it. But for, for a lot of uh, people that listen to the show, including me, I, I kind of might, uh, there's a good chance I know how it feels. And that's why I'm here to help uh, where I can. And that's why I see there's there's hundreds of thousands of people listening, too, that are like, I'm glad you're here. I really hope this podcast helps you. And that's why, like, so many people recommend the show when it's helped them. And I appreciate that so much. So thank you for checking the podcast out and thank you for recommending the podcast. Or thanks for just trying it. Uh, And I do hope it helps you. Now, the one thing to know is this podcast just doesn't work for everybody. So kind of give it a few tries, and I'm going to try to explain everything to you of what to expect and why the show's so different. That may even put you to sleep, believe it or not. For a percentage of people, they're already dozing off, and we're happy for them, really. No, we really are. We're just slightly jealous at the same time. So uh, so how does this show work? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is try to create a safe place, as I said, where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake. I'm going to smooth it. I'm going to pat it. I'm going to rub it down. I'm going to say safe place. Then I'm going to send my voice across to the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents. So I'm going to go off topic, and I'm going to get mixed up, and all to keep you company and to take your mind off of stuff. And creaky dulcet tones kind of means that my voice is not traditionally soothing. It's a voice you could just kind of listen to. You say, well, the voice isn't bad. Not great. Not bad either. Creaky dulcet, you know, not memorable. 
that sleep podcast. I remember forgetting it. Uh, I don't even know what he was talking about. Uh, so yeah, that's the goal of the show. Really, that's hopefully what you're, you're, you're be- you see, Hey, did you check out that sleep podcast? The, uh, the person told you about, oh yeah, I, I, sl- I think I slept great. I don't even remember. I barely remember listening to the podcast. It was some dude. He had a g- grapey, grape grapey, uh, something do- domes or something. Why was he talking about grapey dump dump do, grape grapey donut domes or something? He was talking about that on his podcast. It does. I've never even heard of that. It didn't make any sense. Put me right to well. It didn't put me right to sleep. At first, I kind of smiled. It was like not pity, but I kind of felt something for him. Like, oh, okay, uh, this guy doesn't know where he's. This guy's spinning his wheels like a character in a text-based adventure. Shout out to anybody that's played a text based adventure uh, and then got the answer. Look, look, try to pull on the string. You're spinning your wheels doing that. That's what, uh, it, that's, it'll take too much to explain, but I'm sure you can play a text based adventure. I'm sure they're available in the App Store. Here's one I haven't really played very much of. Zork was like the first big text based adventure. I think that like a breakout hit. Zork, yeah. And, uh, I may be wrong also. A lot of times I'm wrong when I say stuff, especially when I say stuff definitively like that. And you see, yeah, he was trying to describe what I was talking about at breakfast. Then he was, t- then he managed to not explain what a text based adventure is. Uh, but then he tried a video game without the video that's just text based. Uh, they were around before and after video games. Maybe even they were maybe even invented it one one time. Probably pen pals might have done it, but that would have taken super long, like a pen pal based uh, chess game. But and maybe that's where it came. And one of the answers when you were doing something that was not going to work out, uh, or, or they said try instead of saying try something else, this definitely won't work. But you may be close. They'd say you're spinning your wheels looking at that, or you'd say. Pull, pull on the string, and it's a, uh, the string does nothing. Pull on the string twice, uh, the str- nothing happens. Pull on the string three times. It would have to be a pretty smart to say, you're spinning your wheels doing that. Probably a bad example, too. I'm spinning my wheels making, an, I'm trying to make a metaphor and an analogy about spinning my wheels at that. Uh, also, at the time, I didn't really realize what spinning your wheels meant, but I think what it means now, and actually, I'm not kidding. This may sound like I'm trying to be funny. This is the first time I realized what it meant. I, I mean, it, somewhere, some part of my brain knew what it meant, but not the conscious me. I was always like, huh, what does that even mean, spinning my wheels looking at that? Because you're not in a vehicle. To me, it didn't make any sense. If you were driving, I'd say, oh, okay, makes perfect sense to me. But in most of these text space adventures, let me just give an example because I think the first, oh, you know what was the one I played was uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And the first thing you had to do was get out of bed and drink water and take an aspirin because you were hungover. I don't know what that has to do with anything, but that would have been it. You wake up in bed, you have a throbbing headache. Uh, the sun is, you know, rise. You look at, you know, you look at the clock. Oh, it's 1240. There's the sound of a construction equipment. Uh, you're, you know, and then you say, okay, grab a water, drink some, take some aspirin. You see, well, it'd say, look around the room. There's a sparkling glass of water, a jar of aspirin, your alarm clock, your wind, the rest of the room is a normal bedroom as you might imagine it. You, now, you may be saying, I thought I was at a sleep podcast uh, and not in a text-based adventure. And I'd say you're right, uh, but uh, this is more of a, a meander-based adventure, uh, which could, to, could, like, I don't know if text-based adventures are good for that. Maybe. I don't know. I'm going to have to play one, but I don't know when I'm going to find time. But this podcast is meant to keep you company and take your mind off stuff so you could fall asleep. As I said at the beginning, it doesn't work for everybody. 
And of course, you're going to be skeptical or doubtful. Now, if you already know this isn't going to work for you, you could check out sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you. Uh, check that out and, and see, see, see if there's anything else. There's other sleep podcasts and sleepy stuff on there. Uh, what else is uh, sleep with me podcast? Oh, so this, this podcast, it doesn't really put you to sleep. It's more here to keep you company while you fall asleep. And if you can't sleep, you should know I'll be here at the very end to keep you company, whether you're awake or asleep. So it's kind of weird. This is a podcast you could listen to if you need to, or if you need a break during the day. But you also don't need, I don't expect you to listen. So you could listen to me like background noise or you could listen to me because that's really what I'm here. I'm not here to put you to sleep. I'm here to keep you company. Even if you barely listen, I'm here to be your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar sib, your boar cuz, your boar bestie, your boar burr, your neighbor, your boar bud, whatever it is. I'm here to be your friend in the deep dark night. That you don't have like that. Yeah. Just tell me about your, tell me about a text based adventures. They'd say, well, I think I got to the end of that subject. Uh, look around. You haven't got, or think, you could never say think about it. Uh, like put some, how about the character does some work? I'm doing all this typing here. Think about it. Uh, you thought, you've thought for a bit, uh, but nothing's changed. That would probably be the answer. So, uh, and here's the thing, like I'm late to it. I think five or six years ago, tech space adventures were cool again. Now they're probably, now that I'm talking about it, you'd say, well, you might as well, like literally, like, uh, that's, but that's how I buy my clothes. I buy them for 10 years from now, even though I'm, you see, Scoots was wearing that 10 years ago, right when it was out of fashion. Like I just got some waffle based waffle short shorts, uh, you see, I don't think those, which you got shorts made out of waffles. No, but that would be, I mean, would that ever go out of style? Yeah, if you were around any birds, it would be out of style pretty fast. You'd be without shorts. Okay, so where was I? Oh, it's a podcast you don't really listen to. doesn't really put you to sleep. Can you give me some more good news? I'm new to this podcast. Uh, I was hoping to fall asleep. Well, you will. Uh, I'm here to take your mind off of stuff. But the show also has a very different structure that I want to fill you in on uh, because it's a specific structure that you can adjust as you become a regular listener. But you might want to try the structure out. Try it on for size. Put it on like a, a waffle material or, you know, put it on like a, like a, I don't know how you'd make waffle pants uh, or waffle. You'd definitely be better off making waffle shorts and then seeing if that worked before you went for the pants. You say, no, no, first I developed waffle, waffle shorts. I called them waffles, but that was only because I mispronounced it. Then I try, then I made uh, waffle capris, and now I've moved on to waffle pants. Uh, what are you going to do next? Huh. Uh, I don't know. I may probably uh, have some breakfast. I don't have like, uh, obviously I sacrificed a lot of breakfasts for this clothing. Uh, but so, oh, so structure of the show is very different. Starts off with a greeting. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. And I say something silly. So you feel seen and welcome in, but you get the tone of the show is good natured and a little bit fun. Not so serious. Uh, then there's support for the show. So it can be free or paying for it can be optional. So that anybody that wants to listen can listen. There's almost 500 episodes you could listen to for free. Uh, then there's support for listeners who are having a tough time. And then there's support for communities around the show. That's the kind of support part of the start of the show. Then there's the intro, which we're into, which is separate from the support. And the intro is actually a show within a show. And you kind of heard it. Never, uh, It's never gone this way before. Every time it goes different, it follows the same general structure where I try to explain what the podcast is unsuccessfully. Uh, and then I go off on a bunch of tangents. Uh, and the, that is uh, fun for regular listeners. What I, you know, I've never talked about make, putting, making waffles into clothes that I remember, right, regular listeners? Some of them might not even remember because a few percentage of people, like I said, are already asleep. But a lot of listeners use the intro to wind down. 
as part of their bedtime routine, whether they're getting ready for bed, they're doing some other relaxing activity, or they're in bed getting comfortable. The intro gives you a space between being awake and going to sleep uh, that's uh, been proven to work over and over again. It's like the one piece of consistent bedtime advice. Have a wind down. Have a little twilight. Have a landing strip. And that's what the intro does. So that's the intro. Because some people say, oh, it's part of the business or is it self congratulate I say, no, this is definitely, well, I was congratulating myself on imagining I was a waffle clothing designer and that I had iterated. Uh, and it, now I'm probably pretty proud of the fact that I use the word iterated. Pro, pro, well, probably not correctly. Is it iteration if you're going from short shorts to board shorts to capris to pants? Are those iterations or are they just uh, different pieces of clothing? Some part of my brain said, you're an iteration. And I'd say, uh, I said, you're, you're, that's funny. Uh, that's a real fun. That's a good burn. Uh, uh, why? Like, uh, I'm, I'm blushing. My brain just got me so good. You're an iteration. You see, people talk, say that all the time when I'm trying. Hey, iteration. It has less syllables, so I think. Uh, they start out like that. Uh, but I don't think they're saying iteration. Iteration. Maybe they're, Yeah. Let's not go there, because my brain just thought of more jokes based on my, uh, based on iter and ration. I say, no, 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 let's just skip that. Uh, so, uh, oh, what was my point? I have no idea. I was making imaginary waffle. Oh, so regular listeners get to hear the intro, but they know they don't have to listen. They just kind of listen as they're getting ready for bed, as they're drifting away. Or, or, you know, winding down. So there's a couple percentage of people that skip the intro, a couple percentage of people that fall asleep during it. But for the most part, people listen to the intro to, to, to turn the dial on the day down. Then again, there's more support so the show can be free, sponsor support, and come out twice a week. And then there's our story. Tonight it'll be a tale of the tape, a look at a... Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring. Do I remember it? Here's one piece of gold I'll tell you right here. There's a pretty strong possibility I already did this, and I don't rem- I don't even remember recording it. So I rec- I'm going to record it. So, so it's like I probably, and maybe I already did a tale of the tape trying to remember Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring, and I forgot. So not only did I forget the plot of the movie, but I forgot if I recorded that episode. So that should be fun. So, but maybe I didn't. I said, did I, have I done this already? I know I've talked about hobbits and stuff. So we'll do that. Then there's some thank yous at the end. So this is a structure of the show. That's why I make this show. Like I said, give it a few tries. You got nothing to lose. The show's free. It's here to help you. So just see how it goes. I hope it can help you out. I hope it can uh, give you the rest you need and you deserve. I really appreciate you checking the podcast out. I really hope I can help you fall asleep. Thanks again for coming by. And here's a couple of ways I'm able to do it for you for free twice a week. All right, everybody. Uh, it's time to do something I haven't recorded in a long time. And we're going to cover the movie uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, The Fellowship of the Ring. And part of the reason I'm doing this, I was like, geez, trying to figure out movies that came out. Uh, what I presume is the aughts, but I really don't know. So I probably should look that up. Uh, and also at some point here, maybe before this even comes out, uh, there'll be what I think is a Lord of the Rings TV, like streaming, like a streaming pro show or a super extended film. So I'm talking about the Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings, uh, and uh, I'm going to try to remember what I can of the first movie. I will say that I've seen the movie, like this will be, be even more embarrassing because I've seen the extended version in the last three years. And I would say I've seen it twice in the last three to five years, probably in the last three years since I bought the extended version. I probably watched it once alone and then watched it with my daughter and then watched about half of the two towers with my daughter before she said, uh, 
there's still three more hours in this part of the thing. And I said, that sounds like something someone from Rohan would say. And she said that even in the context of the film, actually that part never happened. But, uh, so I can remember seeing this in the movie theater, uh, a Grand Lake theater in Oakland. And in preparation, I reread the books, uh, though I don't really like at this point, my mind is, uh, but I remember, and I think it was one of those things where I didn't know if the idea was like, I can remember where I was when I bought, uh, a used mass market paperback version of the fellowship of the rings. I was in, um, a, uh, a, what is that place called? It's like a used, like a like a secondhand store. The kind of mass market paperback you buy at a secondhand store. Something town, thrift town, I think. I think it was called somewhere in the East Bay, Hayward, San Leandro. And uh, I was looking through their books, saying, or maybe I was in, I don't know. I can kind of picture it, and I can picture where I was standing. And I said, "Oh huh, yeah, I haven't read these in a while. It's a cool cover." And maybe I was even aware that the movies were being filmed and that's why I bought it. I can't remember my motivation or if I bought it. And then I was like, holy cow. But I do remember trying to read the books before the movies came out. I think successfully. And it was before I went to England, I think, because uh, then when I went to Oxford and Cambridge, I was very disappointed not to be able to go to the pub. uh, That I can't think of the name of that either. But whatever, you know, life moves on. So this may be more on the extended version because that's the last thing I saw. And I can't even remember really how it's like. So it starts off in the world. What is that place called? The Shire, uh, where the hobbits live. Hobbits in, uh, I think. Uh, and I don't remember exactly how it starts. We start to get introduced to all the main characters, uh, Bilbo and uh, Frodo. Baggins, Bag End is where they live, and Samwise Ganji. Again, people are going to get, I'm not doing this on purpose. I do pronounce the words differently. What is a sight word to me? Even if I heard it in the movie, it's still going to be a sight word that I imagined how it sounded. But so, we. I think we first we get an idea of those two, of uh, Frodo and uh, Bilbo and Frodo kind of being, uh, you get you saying, huh, is this all there is? Uh, Life in the Shire is pretty good, but what else is going on? And we, we meet Sam, who's uh, uh, Frodo's best friend, and then we meet uh, Bilbo. I think we get a hint to the ring even early on and that Bilbo's preparing for a journey and a little bit stressed about something. And then Gandalf arrives, Gandalf the Grey, and I don't know if Gandalf arrives twice. I think Gandalf does come twice. But it's like this big, I think it's like a Frodo's birthday maybe. I don't know, his name day, or whatever they call it there, candle day or cake day. And so there's a big party for for, for, for Frodo, or Bilbo. And we also meet uh, Pippin and Mary, maybe. I don't, I'm not kidding. I'm not trying to do a bit here. Uh, but I think those are the two other characters. And we, we get a sense of the, the, the Shire, pretty nice place to live. Hobbits who love life. They like your dancing, fireworks, uh, dating, eating, and drinking. And we get the sense of Gandalf and Bilbo's friendship and the, the looming thing, the, the ring, and some other uh, something else going on that's stressing everybody out. And that Bilbo is leaving and I think he's planning on leaving the Shire forever. And then also that Bilbo is either, I can't remember what happens with the ring. If he gives it to, to uh, Frodo, I know there's like an envelope or something. Then what happens is Gandalf returns. Some stuff happens. I don't even know. 
So maybe this happens next. I don't think it does, uh, but uh, I don't know why. But I, because I, I, I was having trouble figuring out if this happens in this movie or in another movie. I mean, like within the series of three. But uh, yeah, let's hold off on that because I'm not sure when it happens. If it happened right now, but it wouldn't make sense because we're still getting to know Frodo. So, yeah, what I think happens is uh, Gandalf returns, um, maybe some interstitials, like if some other stuff happens. But he says, listen, kid, uh, you got to get that ring. So why would, no, because, yeah, then why would he be, why did he return? I don't know, because he rides really fast. Uh, I don't know, maybe he's leaving and comes back. So I don't know, if again, what happened in between here. But basically, are these the ring wraiths, I think, uh, they're start. They're looking for, so there's, okay, so just to set it up for you. Okay, oh boy, because in case you don't watch this or you're not familiar. So hobbits are, um, they're, they're, uh, they're a humanoid, uh, about three, I don't know, three, four feet high. Uh, they don't need shoes because they have like hairy, uh, sturdy feet, uh, they're not like, if you, depending on, like, they're not like a kender or a troll or anything. Uh, typically in Dungeons and Dragons, they are called halflings, I think. Uh, but uh, maybe not, because, uh, I mean, I'm thinking of kenders, because I'm from the Dragonlance world, not uh, the other, like, that's what I read the most fiction from. Anyway, though, so, what was my point? Okay, so... Oh, so that's what uh, hobbits are. They're uh, nice, nice people. Let's just go with that. Just picture in mind, nice, friendly, community-based people, love joy. Gandalf is a human wizard. Uh, now, a couple of things about Gandalf. I've talked about this on the show before. And even picture in my mind. Now, Gan when Gandalf is Gandalf the Grey, great portrayal. It seems like a cool wizard. He's uh, joyful, but also can be uh, have a temper. And be a grouch. He also is a bit, um, he looks like he probably uh, it needs a shower at, at most points in the movie. In this first movie, in the first half of this movie, you see Gandalf could use a shower, at least to wash his hair. So he looks like he would be pungent and probably be like, dude, can you wash that robe? But like, I don't care if you walk around naked, like I'm going to wash you and I'm going to wash your robe. Uh, do, do you have an extra robe? But so, so that's the situation. Uh, th those are the characters. Then there's Sauron. Now it gets really confusing here, but just think of Sour Balls, Sauron. Uh, don't worry about spelling it, but Sauron, in some point they explain the history. Maybe this is in here too, in the beginning. There's a lot of, uh, at so different points, there's a little bit of elven narration. It's very nice. And uh, I think that's Kate Blanchett does a, uh, the narration, maybe. Like, long ago, there was a land with pure joy. And then, you know, like that kind of stuff. Uh, not quite sleepy. Uh, but so, meanwhile, while so basically this, the movie starts, hobbits are living their best life, I, I could say, except for Frodo. Or except for Bilbo, who's an older hobbit, wants to write a book, but it has some j j j j stress, has this ring. That's at least the symbol of stress. Hint, though, it's not. It's actually the cause, of, not a metaphor. Would that ring, one ring to rule them all? Not a met it is a metaphor, but also not a metaphor in the movie. So the ring is stressing him out, and his health's not so great or whatever or something. I don't know. You get the sense of, like, okay, this cat's like a... Uh, looking at it and saying, what am I going to do with the rest of my days? You have his nephew Frodo, lives with him, it, more or less a father-son style relationship. Uh, Frodo's a kid, right at the cusp of adulthood, and or like a young adult saying, what the heck is it, well, you know, what am I going to do with my life? Uh, this is kind of boring. I, I have a sense of adventure, but I love my home. The Shire's the best. Have his best friend Samwise Ganji, who is, uh, uh, you know, a bit, uh, 
like working his way up, scrapper, uh, rough around the edges, a little bit um, has a broader emotional range, that, like he has a bit of an emotional range in a good way. And then you have uh, Mary and Pippin or whatever, who are their, their secondary friends, really nice. Uh, they'll become, they'll play a big role at different times. And they're, they're a bit of, they got the trickster in them and the adventurer, you know, they're like, uh, w- like Winnie the Pooh, Pooh, not, nah, well, sometimes they act like Winnie the Pooh. Sometimes they act like other characters, you know, getting into trouble. And you have Gandalf the Grey, a leader, part of a council of something, uh, love, full love, uh, but also, uh, like, uh, has a heroic streak, uh, and involved in the ways of the world and a leader, uh, but also wandering around. It seems like wandering around, loves to check up on the communities, but also is checking up on them for some reason. Good friends with Frodo. They had some adventures way back. Uh, didn't go so hot. This ring's a part of it. Uh, Gandalf stressed about the ring too. Okay, then meanwhile, in the world which may be explained or not, there's Sauron, thought, to, totally evil uh, being, demigod-type powers, maybe even more. Uh, they thought they got rid of them, but, you know, history shows that uh, Sauron way back made these rings to trick people to share the power, but really Sauron was a dictator, this one, these, uh, these, uh, this, uh, this, uh, king stood up to him, worked with the elves. They did, you know, a bunch of stuff happened. Sauron was defeated. They thought it was forever. Turns out it's not. Uh, meanwhile, when Sauron was giving out these rings, uh, one ring to rule a moment, Sauron wore a ring, the ring of power. They gave out all the rings to the leaders of all the kingdoms, but everybody that put on a ring, you know, they became under Sauron's power. I think. I don't, I'm not, you know, don't hold me to this. This is what I to tell the tape in my mind. Uh, now Sauron lives in a volcano, or lives in Mount Doom, I think, uh, and is up to stuff, recruiting people. Uh, looking for this ring, sends out these ring wraiths who are like, uh, uh, just like in other movies, uh, you know, fairly powerful uh, uh, forces of Sauron's, uh, Sauron's main um, heavies, I'd say. They ride horses, they wear armor, they're up to no good. They can sense the ring because they're, you know, related to it and they're sniffing it out. So, basic situation is Sauron needs that ring back. Uh, and the ring was lost forever, found by Frodo. Also, no, I think the back, backstory of that, I'll just tell it to you now, but I think one of the elves tells it to us later. It tells Frodo. Once upon a time, there was a, I, think, I don't even think this comes in this movie, but basically there's a Smeagol golem. And the ring had been lost uh, because, you know, it was this, the ring is its own sentience and it's not a good sentience. Uh, it wants to get back to Sauron or corrupt whoever wears it. The rings were corruptive, like all power corrupts type stuff. All of them. But this was the main ring, I believe. Uh, so it had fallen out of the world, but the ring wants to find its way back. So it had found this one dude, Smeagol who uh, found the ring when he was swimming with his cousin or something. He got, he, he like took the ring, ended up going and living like in a, um, a grotto and became obsessed with the ring. The ring became his best friend. And I guess the ring just kind of parked itself with Smeagol for a while or a golem. Sooner or later, he was totally isolated. Kind of the ring was a higher power type drug for him. And Frodo found it during his adventures. He ran into Smeagol and the ring. Ring makes you invisible, but not in a good way. Not like some invisible cloak. And Smeagol swore he would get the ring back, Gollum. Uh, So he's been looking for it too. 
So as the movie starts, uh, Frodo gives uh, Bilbo the ring. No, Bilbo gives Frodo the ring. Gandalf warns him. He comes back. He says, this, everybody's looking for this ring. You got to get out of the Shire and get yourself to this pub. Meet up with this dude Strider. He'll help you out. And Bilbo's like, I'm not sure I want to leave home. Never left home. Sam says, I'll go with you. And uh, because Bilbo just departed, he couldn't say handle goodbye or something, but he left the ring. Maybe Gandalf was hung over when all this happened, but whatever. Like, so Bilbo or Frodo has to head out. Sam goes with him. Then Merry and Pippin meet up with them and they say, hey, we're coming too. Frodo already realizes that this is pretty uh, serious. uh, And they just dodge the ring race at one point when they're on the road. The ring race are looking for them. And Gandalf goes, yo, I got to go take care of some business. Uh, So you find Strider. I'm going to take care of this other stuff. So I get to this part here, cause, but plus I forget a ton of stuff. But so then Gandalf goes off. Now, now this is confusing. There's Sauron, but there's also Sauron. And again, Sauron and Sauron or Saruman or something. Christopher Lee plays a Sauron, Sauron, who's also a famous wizard, was uh, once one of the great wizards of the world. Uh, Gandalf's friend, super powerful, but uh, wears uh, white robes. But this is not the same as Dragonlance. Like, your robes don't uh, necessarily, like, in so in Dragonlance, the wizards wore either uh, black robes, red robes, or white robes, uh, and they kind of showed their alignment. I don't know about this world, but Gandalf wears gray robes. His robes could have been white, though, the way he, like, launders stuff. But so he goes to Sauron and says, yo, do you know about the Sauron? He's up to stuff. Uh, And uh, he's building an army. He's looking for this ring. What do you think we should do? We got to get everybody, you know, nobody, uh, also apathy and stuff and, and ambition rule the world now. And Saruman says, yeah, we definitely do, but I think you're overreacting. And he goes, I've been spying on him. Uh, I got this, like, globe uh, that, you know, helped me to see him. And then uh, and Gandalf says, man, I heard about those. It's like a seeing stone or something. He goes, but I heard those were, like, two-way, man. That's not good. And then he goes, two-way, and then he realizes too late that uh, Sauron has made a deal with Sauron or been, you know, overpowered by him. And they do a little dance-off, uh, and uh, Sauron wins. And he says, I'm going to lock you up till you tell me where the ring's at. Uh, but he already says, don't worry, the ring's already safe. Uh, now, meanwhile, Sauron is starting to build another army for Sauron of, like, combined beings. Uh, and so he starts build, He starts this whole, like, uh, industri- military-industrial complex at his uh, tower. I think that's a lot of that's in the next movie, but just, you know, set it up. So meanwhile, Gandalf is like stuck there on his roof. Uh, but then Gandalf uh, calls a moth, talks to a moth and says, go get me a griffin. And the moth says, no problem. And the griffin comes and re- rescues Gandalf. That happens at some point in the first half of this film. Meanwhile, the hobbits, they go meet up with a strider at a pub, human pub. Of course, there's trouble. Of course, oh, they said keep a low profile, but once you get a drink in a hobbit, they're dancing on the tables, pouring drinks over their heads. And so the uh, ring race eventually tracked them down at the hotel, I think. And they sneak out of there. Then they try to hide out again. Uh, like somewhere else, uh, like at a castle the next day, because they're on the run, and they're sleeping there, and then uh, the ring race show up again. Meanwhile, Strider's, like, doing his best. He's trying to train the uh, the hobbits and stuff. 
But then Frodo puts on the ring, I think by accident, and he realizes he disappears, but the ring race can see them. And they basically give him like a, like a little, like a spectral touch or something. And he gets a tummy tum tum. Now they're on the run from the ring race. Frodo has a tummy tum tum, but they meet up with uh, Strider, who ends up as a, uh, like this, like royal blood. He's considered, he's like one of those people that's like, uh, can go between the world of the elves. You know, he's loved by elves, loved by some humans. Heir to the throne of Gondor. Aragon, or yeah, Aragon. Aragon, something like that, uh, is his human name. Strider's his elven name. He's a ranger, you know, ranger by day, you know, Harlequin style, you know, like he's got flowing hair, beautiful eyes, and he's dating an elven queen, an elven princess, of course. Uh, she shows up, and now she's also got magic powers, uh, so she helps them escape, uh, maybe even twice from the ring race, uh, and uh, like they go on the run. She helps Frodo. They split up. Frodo goes to sleep. Uh, next thing you know, do they get away? They do. Uh, and Frodo wakes up after resting for a while. Uh, Bilbo's there. And uh, Frodo's on the mend. And we're, we're in Elven. We're in, we're in uh, I don't know where we are. Uh, maybe I'll think of it. So, you know, Elven Paradise, basically. Now we get a lot of info here. One... We find out that Bilbo's still obsessed with the ring, and he's, but he, like, so Frodo says, whoa, 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 buddy, B boundaries. Uh, then he gives, uh, oh, he'd already given, like, a mithril chain mail and, a, and his uh, sword to Bilbo, or Frodo, maybe, or maybe he gives him to him now, but whatever. Then we find out, uh, you know, Sam and Mary and Pippin are there. And we find out that, uh, you know, like, uh, all is not well in the human world. We get, Sean Bean is, uh, Boromir. He thinks that, uh, his family is ready to take the throne or maybe even him. And, uh, like that there'll be leaders of pure heart that he could even handle the ring and that we should use the ring for good. But really you're supposed to throw the ring in Mount Doom and that'll solve it all. The elves are bo bolting from the world. They're taking boats and they're leaving. Frodo's going, Bilbo's going with them. But we, we had the last great council to decide what to do. And everybody's represented. So you have uh, elves, dwarves, and hu different, uh, well, a couple of humans from different, uh, Boromir from whatever. I don't know if he's from Rohan or, uh, I think he's from Gondor, but he's not an official... He's on like the second tier family or something. And he just says he's a little needy. Uh, so then they say, they say, what are we going to do about this? We got to throw this ring in Mount Doom, but, it, you know, it has power. It corrupts most people. And they say, we need a hero. And then everybody says, I don't know what to do. And they're arguing. And Frodo says, whoa, 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 man. Uh, I'll do it because uh, I've been wearing it anyway. It, you know, it's my responsibility. I got it covered. And then Sam's like, no way you're going without me. And then even Gandalf and uh, Strider, Aragon, Boromir, uh, Gimli, or this, the representative of the dwarves, and um, Legolas, uh, the best uh, like athlete in all of Elven, uh, the elves, uh, they all say, we'll go with you. We'll form a fellowship of the ring. And we'll help you get to Mount Doom. And they say, okay, sounds good. So they set out, but they're trying to avoid the ring wraiths. Uh, now Sauron's got uh, people going out looking for them. Also, so so they try to go over this one mountain. So they're encountering all sorts of difficulties, right? Also, uh, Aragon has to break up with uh, the elven princess uh, because he, he, she says, uh, you know, I guess they're, um, they have this impressive lifespan, but she could give up her lifespan to be with a human. He says, nah, nah, don't waste your time with me. 
And meanwhile, they're like, you're splitting, like you're basically going into isolation when we need, we could use some elven help with this uh, sour. And they say, it's not going to go good. We're getting out of here. So then they try to go over this mountain, but Saur, Sauron is like casting like, uh, light, you know, he's so powerful. He could cast lightning bolts, across, like change the weather and stuff. So they can't get over this mountain. So then they go back down and they say, what are we going to do? we got to get over these mountains to get to the next round of mountains to get to Mount Doom. And you, there's like even apps that tell you how far it is uh, that Bilbo had to walk. There's like one running app. I never use it, but I downloaded it because uh, you could use it to track your running to see how long it would take you to recap uh, Bilbo's or how, whatever, uh, Frodo's journey. But so then they're in a pickle, right? So then they say, okay, well, what are we going to do? And they say, well, like, you could go through this old uh, dwarven mine and fortress or kingdom built into this one mountain. But we heard it, nothing good came out of it. Uh, and this is where a little bit of the history is confusing to me. Um, and again, because I read so much Dragonlance, so it's just kind of hard for me to separate. But I guess you could fill in the blanks. So now they're like cornered, right? Uh, they they go back down the mountain. They can't go over it. Everybody's looking for them. They're at this magical set of doors. Uh, and then they have to figure out the spell and they have to figure out how to say open it. I think you have to do it at like a full moon. Just happens to be a full moon. They finally get the door open with some teamwork brainstorming and arguing. They get the door open. And then, I don't know if you remember... Uh, the first Star Wars movie in the trash compactor, the same friggin' thing that was in there is in the water, or pretty close to it, uh, in the water outside of this uh, mine. So they have to, like, ditch that thing, but it, it messes up the door, jams the door on them because it's always trying to press buttons. So now they're locked in. Because the, the, at first they get in the mind, they go, oh boy, never mind. This place has uh, not got a good feel. But they can't leave. So now they have to go through this mine or kingdom or whatever. And it's totally uh, empty, but there's a weird feel there. Like, And they, basically this is when Gandalf is really grouchy. He says, don't make a sound and we'll be fine. But don't do anything dumb, Pippin and Mary, by the way. So meanwhile, they're searching for a while. Then they find this, like, uh, one room where they decide to take a break, and they find these books, uh, and they say, oh, boy, this is the history of uh, the last uh, residence here, and they're reading it, and it's very tense. This is one of the best best scenes in all three movies in my for me because the tension really builds, and then there's some great action. But so they're reading this book, and it says, oh, boy, there's something we woke, we dug too deep, uh, and uh, we found things that should never be found deep. You know, th this is all fiction, by the way. Uh, they say, don't worry, it'll be fine. But for this part, uh, you know, this is part of the movie where you learn this, you know, gain the skills that you'll learn, you know, use later two or three movies from now. But they say, yo, boy, there's, like, little people, like, uh, and then there's some big baddie, too, like, big boss level. Biggest of the big boss levels in the first movie, but not as big as the final boss, uh, Sauron. Probably have to deal with Sauron, too, at some point. But for now, and then Merry or Pippin, they knock some stuff into a well, makes a bunch of noise. That wakes up everybody that lives in the uh, mine. They come. And they're not friends. They're, they're like, hey, we want to take your stuff. Uh, you, this is our house. Uh, so basically, the fellowship, they have to get out of there. While they're trying to get out of there, they realize that some the big boss is even, like, the, this is a boss level. It's not just a level. It's a level with a boss at the end. And this one looks like a boss. Like, uh, it's big. It's got hot skin. Uh, no shirt on. You know, the whole nine yards. Uh It's got, you know, feet. Uh, and it doesn't have feet. It has, you know... Uh, whatever those things are called, clompers. 
And apparently I say this wrong. I always call it a bar log, but I guess it's called a, it's come to something else. Bar log. I don't know. Bar log is what I call it. That's just what I, but that's like the giant big boss. So they're on the run from everybody that lives there and the big boss. And they're running, running, running. They're trying to get away. Couple things in here were, you know, the physics of it, of the effects were a little over the top. But most of them get away, but then they're still, this is like big boss is still in pursuit and Gandalf is, says, you know, I got to stop this, uh, because in the end Frodo has to get away. That's the most important thing. And, uh, and so, uh, they, uh, they like, uh, Gandalf stands up and tries to take on the big boss level, kind of does at first. That's when he says, and I misquote this all the time. I always thought he said, you shall not pass or, or something, but uh, he says something different. But I always used to yell that all the time. But he tries to shut stuff down. Uh, then him and, um, him and the like boss, they go, they leave the movie for, for a time being. Now, don't worry. It'll be bad. Don't worry at all. Now, so then everybody's heartbroken because Gandalf, while he was a grouch, he could be a grouch and he probably was pungent uh, and he could have used a hair washing. He was their leader, pretty powerful and a father figure and kind hearted when he could be and considered the brains of the operation. Uh, they say, holy cow, what are we going to do now that uh, without Strider? Uh, or without uh, Gandalf or Toast. And now I'm not sure. I mean, I know. Okay, so then they wander into the Elven Kingdom, and these elves find them. And now they're totally heartbroken. Takes them a while. I think they have to dodge the ring race once or twice. They get into this Elven Kingdom, a different Elven Kingdom. These are the forest elves. Uh, and Kate Blanchett is the queen of the forest elves. They find out about Gandalf. They have a whole ceremony where they find, we find out that Aragon is like totally, she can talk, she totally can see into everybody's heart. So she's trying to give everybody advice, but she says, this is going to be tough. Really, really tough. Uh, but she says, you could do it together. Uh, you got to get this ring. You can't give up because uh, they all want to give up. Of course. But she says, it's not going to happen. So then she says, here's some lembas. I got some, you know, camouflage cloaks for you. You know, we'll rebuild your spirits. Lembas is like traveling bread or rations. Uh, and uh, so she gives them some tools that they're going to need. Camouflage coats are always great. Uh, and she gives them canoes. They set off again. But meanwhile, now Saruman's army is looking for them and they're like, can run really fast and they have a great sense of smell. So it's even worse. So eventually what happens is, uh, they try to park their boats. They got to go over, they got to go around these falls and this is all like taking its toll on, uh, uh, Frodo too. And Frodo, like, like they all get the advice from uh, Kate Blanchett Elf, but you know how you interpret the advice is up to you. Now, meanwhile, Boromir, uh, the Sean Bean character, he's like still like, wait a second, I've got royal blood. I know what's best, you know. I should just take this ring. We'll bring it back to Gondor and we'll rule all in place of Sauron. Power, you know, ultimate power does not corrupt. And he almost is like, this. These all these uh, foibles prove my point. So at some point he corners Frodo. He says, yo, get, now the ring, you know, plays tricks. It's got a built-in delusion. So he says, yo, give me the uh, ring or I'll take it, basically. And Frodo says, no, man, that's not how it works. And he says, I'll just take it from you then. And then Frodo wakes him up. Uh, but at the same time he wakes up uh, from the delusion, that's when the Sauron's crew comes in. And everybody's separated, so it becomes this whole mess. Uh, and Boromir decides to go see the great Gondor in the sky, fly with the Gondors above Gondor. And um, 
uh, everybody split up for a time. And Frodo says to himself, maybe this is for the best. Uh, I'm just going to go by myself. Maybe they re-meet again and they have a reconvene for a little while. But then Frodo sneaks out and even uh, Strider sees him and he says, okay, I get it, I get it. And so Frodo tries to head out solo, but Sam says, yo, you're not going with me. And Frodo says, I got to do this alone. Uh, I feel like uh, it'll be safer for everybody. I'm small. I can hide. Also, the Elven Queen pointed out to uh, Frodo that they were being followed by Smeagol. And that Smeagol was already following them. So then, so that comes up, I think, in the next next, uh, movie. And so then um, uh, Frodo says, no, Sam, you're not coming. Sam says, I'm com- come with you, basically. I'm 100% coming with you. He doesn't give him a choice. Uh, so they head off together. Meanwhile, I had forgotten that Mary and Pippin, they became guests of Saruman's army. Because Saruman's army, they said, just get the halflings. Uh, they said, get them all and bring them, hu- bring them to Saruman. So Mary and Pippin are stuck with these, this, the, their guests of the army. So then uh, Aragon, Gimli, and uh, Legolas are the last three of the Fellowship left. To their knowledge, G- Gandalf has gone to the Tower in the Sky, but even though that's not what happened. And uh, Boromir is, you know, in the Great Gondor. And Sam and Frodo are off, and so they kind of almost needed a distraction. And maybe the Sauron's army is not that smart, so they just said, we got what we came for. We got two of the halflings, right? So they say, our mission now is to rescue Sam and uh, Pippin, or Sam and Mary, or whatever. Mary and Pippin. And so they head off to do that. And I think that's how the movie ends. But let's uh, let's look it up a little bit. Okay, it came out in 2001. Uh, what else do we need to know here? Uh, the budget was $900 million. Oh, no, $93 million. Almost did a billion dollars in box office. Uh, Sauron, One Ring... Frodo Baggins, uh, Middle Earth in the ba- hangs in the balance. Uh, they start off to Mount Doom where they can destroy the ring. Uh, let's see, plot, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, in the Second Age, they were all given these rings of power, but they were, uh, you know, they were really under the control of Sauron in Mordor, Isildur of Gondor. To, is the one who say gets the ring off of Sauron and defeats Sauron, returns Sauron to spirit form. Uh, Isidore actually wore the ring, uh, then he loses the ring. That's when you got 2,500 years later, Gollum finds it. Uh, then Bilbo finds it with Gollum. Oh, yeah, it was uh, six years after that, 111th birthday for Bilbo. Gandalf shows up. Uh, he leaves everything to Frodo, including the ring. Gandalf says, wait a second, this is the one true ring. Uh, and uh, also learns that Gollum was the one who told them that it was the Shire and Baggins who took the ring. Gandalf says, you got to get out of here. So I guess that all happened, in, you know, over two nights. Samwise heads off. Uh, Sour- Gandalf goes to re- meet with Sauron, and uh, Frodo and Sam are joined by Merry and Pippin. I got that right. Uh, they go to Bree uh, to meet with Strider. Oh, supposed to meet with Gandalf, but Strider says, "I'm there. We're going to Rivendell." Then they go to Weathertop. So this part's right. Uh, Frodo gets kissed by a ring wraith, uh, and then the uh, Arwen, the elf, and Strider's beloved, and uh, oh, Strider and Arwen reunite their love for each other. Then they say, Lord Elrond decides he can't keep the ring in Rivendell, 
Gotta be destroyed in Mount Doom. Frodo volunteers. And then Gandalf, Sam, Mary Pippin, Legolas, Gimli, and Boromir. And Strider, who is actually Aragorn, Isidil's heir, and rightful king of Gondor. Frodo gives Sting a chain shirt of Mithril uh, to Frodo. Bilbo gives him those. Okay, so they head out to Gap of Rohan, uh, but Saruman's watching that. Then they go off over the mountains. Uh, that's when the storm comes. They have to go through the mines of Moria. And that's when they run into the, the all those uh, Balrog, I guess. There's a, Is that how it's spelled? B-A-L, Barlog, but it's Balrog. Uh, Gandalf fends that off, uh, but it, they go, they vanish together. Then they go to Lothlorien, Lothar, Lothar, uh, Galadriel. Uh, she's the one, she, she tells Frodo that only he can complete the quest. Uh, and that someone's going to try to take the ring. Sauron's got his crew looking for them. Then they go to Parth Galen. And Frodo gets, oh, so I was right, deals with Boromir, tries to take the ring. Then the crew shows up, Merry and Pippin go with them. Aragon comforts Boromir as he heads to the Great Gondor, promises to help the people of Gondor. Frodo heads off alone, but Sam comes, uh, because he promised Gandalf he would look after Frodo as his friend. He's going to need a friend. And, uh, yeah, so I guess I was pretty close there. I mean, I guess I've seen it. Uh, there was definitely changes. I don't know what will be on the, um, the Amazon product. But, yeah, it would be interesting. And, I mean, I'm sure it's, uh, like, uh, like uh, looking back at this and then preparing for something new. I always like it. Uh, if it's, as long as the casting's good and the story's good uh, and the effects are good. And the music's good, <laughs> no, but uh, I think the casting will be interesting. I don't have, know any of the cast, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so uh, good night, everybody. That's the tale of the tape with Inside My Mind. All right, I want to thank everybody that signed up for our uh, Midnight Mission newsletter. Uh, it's free, and people get to come to live shows, join us in uh, helping support people experiencing homelessness. It makes a huge difference to me, uh, and, uh, you know, especially people that are willing to do something. Yeah, it's free. Hey, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash midnight mission. So I want to thank uh, Adrian. Uh, thank you. I want to thank Alan. Thank you so much. I want to thank Zappa. Thank you so much. Kimberly, thank you so much. Ellen, thank you so much. Sarah, thank you very much. Saritha, thank you so much. And Mart, thank you. Thanks uh, for taking a few minutes. Uh, well, it actually probably takes like 30 seconds to sign up at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash midnight mission to support and join in and be a part of the Sleep With Me community. I really, like, really helps... Uh, I don't know, being a part of something helps me uh, stay engaged and uh, appreciate everybody that supports the podcast so it can come out twice a week for free. It supports me making the podcast, it supports the sponsors. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and, uh, the, the, we've been able to add all those extra shows on the free feed uh, because of these Tuck You In sponsors. Uh, so uh, here you go. All right, everybody, and now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. So if you listen to this podcast on a regular basis, you know I have a morning routine, you know I have an evening routine, I have a lot of different things I do to take care of my mind, my feelings, my body, and talk therapy is one of those things I do every single week with a licensed therapist. Just like I, if I need legal advice, I talk to a lawyer. If I need my car fixed, I go to a mechanic. I don't try to do it myself. I don't need to do it myself. And that's what I tell people in my personal life all the time, to check out better 
BetterHelp. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat-only therapy sessions, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Our listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash sleepwithme. That's BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash sleepwithme. BetterHelp.com slash sleepwithme. Thanks, everybody.